everybody, Jeremy here from Flatware Creations. I am making a cat today, and I'm just making one, because that's my last order. Uh, so today we're going to go through, and I'm going to show you how to turn a regular fork. And actually this one, I just noticed, has a little riser in the middle. See, it's a little bit higher up in the middle than the other two. So this cat we're going to make shaped up like um, this was a brand new pattern that I got. I've never had this one before. As much as I could tell, it's from 1939. Um, I'm definitely making bracelets out of these handles, um, maybe a ring or two. Um, but today we're making a cat. So I'm going to show you from beginning to end how to uh, make this guy Let's make sure I say hello okay so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get this guy flat you can use your mallet I'm gonna use my press over here <laughs> and because uh, it only takes a second with the press okay and we're done we're mostly flat uh, let me bring you down here let's see this one let's bring it back just a touch I use this brown board I call it it's paneling basically and after a while it gets a little divot in it what I like to do with that divot is you can see kind of the curve here I'm gonna take that right out now we're flat I'm not gonna polish it up first I'll do that all after um, what we're gonna do first though so I'm bring it back here First, we have to draw a cat. Hi, Cheryl. Um, I like using these little Sharpie fine tip markers because they don't wipe off very easily. So I definitely know that our tail is coming up here and I go about halfway in the handle. Um, what that does is that gives me enough room to uh, make a hole up here um, you can go up taller and then make this little piece um, an, an actual uh, spot for a jump ring to go through or the necklace to go through. Um, so because this guy has this taller one here, I'm going to start up here as high as I can. I'm going to draw my ear, go across. Draw my other ear, bring that back around. You can't see any of that. Jeremy, we can't see anything. There we go. Okay, so like I said, up here I started halfway. You can go a little bit more if you want, just to be safe. Um, so I really like the cats with their heads tilted. That's my favorite design. Um, so I'm just going to poke this little cheek out right here. And I'm going to bring it back to the neck. I'm going to drop down just a little bit. And then we're going to make a big sweep. That wasn't very sturdy. Nice big arc um, and then we're going to bring this tail right down and make sure it's kind of looks proportionate I actually want this to go way higher so I'm going to bring this up here
It's easy if you can get like an anchor point here and then just slide your finger around. We'll help get that nice round. And I think the problem that I'm having here It doesn't like to come off very easily. Okay, so here's the problem I'm having. I think I have this up too high. Now his head looks too big. So on most of the cats, you're going to have all three of these guys at the same distance. They're all going to be flush across here, which gives you more body. So I'm actually going to erase this. And let's start the ears up a little bit higher. A little cheek hanging out there. Mm -hmm. Still looks weird. Let's see what happens whenever we put eyes on them. Some little whiskers, a little mouth. Kitty cat. Still not very happy with this tail right here. Maybe we don't go that far. And these are just general lines. We can adjust all of this after. I just like to try and get the rough shape out there. So there's that. Okay, this makes his body look a little bit better. A little more proportionate. His head just looks so big. Sorry, it's been a couple days since I made a cat. I think it's been at least over a year or almost a year. One eye right there, one eye right there, nose, whiskers, mouth, Now he kind of looks like an alien. <laughs> a little long naked kitty. Naked. Uh, let's see. I like this part. If we start this up higher, that should give us some more body. There we go. Now it has more of a body. And we're gonna put stripes on this guy. Hi Kelly. Um, we are making a little kitty cat pendant. So I always freehand these. I used to have a stencil that I used, but normally it's easier to just freehand it <laughs> for me. But I realized I haven't made a cat in a long, long time. Uh, so we started up here. Uh, I basically split the piece in half, big enough for me to 
drill a hole up here and put a jump ring through it. You can also go up farther and then take this and curl it around and run the necklace through it that way too. Um, so I was just trying to get proportions right. I think this ear needs to go just a little bit higher. All right, so this is our rough outline. I'll probably take it down, I'll probably cut down just a little bit further, maybe right in here. Make that halfway, just a little bit more of a neck. Okay. Now, I've got my wax. I'm gonna bring you guys up just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so with the, uh, because the cat, well, because this fork has a middle tine that's higher than the other two, I kind of always try and hump their back a little bit, kind of give them that. <laughs> so today we're using a, let me see if I can flip this around here. I'm going to be using my uh, just generic jeweler saw, um, number three aught blades. And I put these all in test tubes and I always make sure that I keep the one that I'm having the saw just here so I don't have to go digging for it and I know what I'm using. So the next time I pick it up, what size blade is it? It's a three, three aught. Okay. Let's get all of this picked up and we're going to start cutting this guy out. Um, I broke a couple blades the other day because I haven't done a lot of sawing lately, but let's see how, how many I can get through before I have to, uh, or how much I can get through before I have to change the blade. So let's do this. I've got my little beeswax here and I'm always just lubing up the blade. You'll be able to hear whenever, okay. Sorry, had to take my headphones off. Barracuda was just a little too distracting. Okay, so glasses. I'm going to put these guys on. So the way I adjust my bench or my, my uh, cutting block is in my vise. It's going to be really weird whenever I get my shop set up and I set it up like a normal, uh, stand or a normal jeweler's bench um, because that comes straight out at you where this one here is at an angle okay so here's one of the things I always do I put my blade right up against the wood here Jeremy we can't see uh, let's zoom in here a little bit good so I put my saw blade up against the wood here that keeps my saw blade right where I want it and I can move the piece that I'm cutting right to where that is so I can get my line started now once I've done that now I can pull it away and I already have my line going and I don't have to worry about the saw slipping down the the piece of silverware. I 
forgot my paintbrush. I'll use a little paintbrush. It takes away the shavings. So we're going to take a turn. Okay, go ahead. Um, I'm going to turn this right here. Give him a little forehead or top of his head. How do you clean the area to solder? Guess it wasn't as clean as I thought. Um, so if you've used like wax or put it in the buffer or anything, um, that stuff will all come off with Dawn if you don't want to tumble it first. Blade number one. Uh, let's see. Let's do this. Uh, so blade number one of the day. I would take and um, either put it in an ultrasonic with some Dawn disc soap or um, just clean it up with some Dawn in your finger or some water uh, generally that will get most of that stuff on it also what you can do is um, use these kind of abrasive discs to um, just kind of really clean off the area so this one here is 2500 grit that's not really going to leave a lot of marks, but it will take off the stuff on the top. Um, I would still afterwards take some uh, some Dawn and wash it off. Uh, that way you just know that there's nothing on there. Um, that's been my biggest success for that. Water and blue Dawn dish soap. That's all I use too. And if it uh, doesn't come out good, more done. <laughs> I've had some knives I've had to run three times. Just, I kept adding Dawn and then I learned just experimenting how much Dawn to put in. Um, whenever I think it's really nasty, I just put in a bunch. It's cheap. Uh, let's get back to soldering this, or not soldering. Let's get back to sawing this guy. <laughs> Alright. Fresh new blade. What happened there was I turned too far. And I wasn't allowing the blade To push to cut where I needed it to or where where I wanted it to I was forcing it the other thing is if you look right here you can see that's not getting past that um, so I'm going to take this back here just a little bit. I'm going to 
put it through and I'm just going to change the side of the fork. Now I gotta tighten this thing up. There we go. Let's try and get it to start. Easy. Okay. When I'm doing my bud vases, fingers. Um, when I'm doing my bud vases, I always tumble the spoons after I flatten them. And once I flatten them, um, that tumbling will clean them so I don't have to worry about soldering them and it not being clean enough to accept the solder. get away with it. I did. I've gotten rusty. Yeah, let's give them a little cheek. Again, we're going to go back. So this time I'm going to, uh, let me change cameras. Let's see if I can do this without breaking it. I'm going to bring on here. I'm going to bring this, my piece up to the top and try and just easily get it around that curve. Now I'm on the other side of the piece here. But I want it to be on this side. of it. Hi Lori's. Okay so we're gonna go to his cheek, finish out his cheek, and go right down to the neck. Okay now I'm gonna go down, start on his neck. I don't think this blade is a three-aught. It feels too wide. So we're back here again. Okay, we're gonna make our neck a little bit longer. And we'll start our turn. Yeah, this should have been turning already. It feels a little thick. Let's see. Oh, something popped up on the screen. I can't see your guys' comments. Exit. Yep, I'm just using beeswax. Um, you can use regular wax for candle making, um, just about anything. I've used candles before. Yeah, this. Okay. 
just is not wanting to cooperate. It's like all the teeth. Yeah, all the teeth have just gotten destroyed. So we'll see how far we get. Hey Jeremy, just wanted to say thank you for your help and answering my question and appreciate your videos. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm al always glad to help. If I'm able to, I, I will always help. Okay, so now we're making this that humped back. Slightly pushing. And we're going to clean all of this up with our diamond bits. So if it's not perfectly smooth, we can, we can fix that later. Right now, pretty much, we're just getting the rough shape. start my turn. I'm kind of pulling backwards and turning my blade as I saw. Trying to get that to just kind of turn around in a little circle spot there. And don't try and force it. See how my fork goes back this way? Thank you, Lori. So if you're having trouble sawing, just let go of the piece, because that's right where it wants to be. So that's the easiest spot for it. So I'm going to turn this. Again, I'm pulling backwards. Okay. Now I've got it going straight. I'm going to start my curve. Um, I didn't get these from Pepe. Um, these were online. Um, I think I got them on eBay or Amazon. Um, it's just a, I bought a set that had um, had like four or five different sizes. Um, I'd love to try the nano blades, but I like maybe likes not the word. Um, I feel more comfortable breaking cheap blades than expensive blades and you never quite know what the base metal is underneath this that you're cutting through so sometimes it could be like a brass other time it's some harder base metal so if I break one of these I don't feel so bad if I was doing more silver work or gold work Definitely, I'd be trying those nano blades. And now the long trip up the tail. I think I'm gonna have to fix an ear. Look, looking at its other ear, I think I made it a little small.
hard to put metal back. So the the sizes are measured from I think it's eight to one and then one ot. So all of your numbers that aren't that don't have an ot or a slash zero next to them, those are all bigger. So one, two, three, and four, and then if you want to go smaller, zero or one ot, two ot, three ot up to eight aught. So the smallest size blade is an eight aught. This is a three aught that I use for most of my silverware. Um, it, it tends to hold up a lot better, whether it's thin or thick. And it gives me a little bit more room to um, be aggressive with it getting through some of the the pieces so for like really really tiny lines um, I made a pendant where I cut out the word love and cursive that was really hard that was an 8 aught blade and took forever but you had to because those little tiny holes I mean some of the holes I was making were only the size the thickness of this blade here um, so what I recommend for most silverware is a three slash zero blade. Um, you can normally find packs that will go one, two, and then one aught, two aught, three aught. Um, so you can test out the blades, see which ones you like. If you're doing just a lot of straight cuts and not turning, I would go to a one on these guys, not these guys, but normally a one on a piece, um, just so you're just cutting right through it. I found these, I was at a friend's house in Rochester, New York. And I'm like, hey, while I'm down here, let's see what's on the marketplace. So I found two sets of silverware while I was down there. I think Rochester is about five and a half hours from me. Always make sure you leave yourself enough room for the tail. You don't want it to be too thin. We can always, well, we're going to be shaping everything after once we actually see what, how bad of a saw <laughs> job I did. We'll do some problem solving. Okay. Almost there. No. No. The sharper teeth has more to do with the metal than the size. So there's a, a sheet or a chart, reference chart, that says, um, so if you're doing like a backing plate on sterling, you want, uh, is that the right one? Nope, that's the wrong one. Um, there is a chart. Yeah, the teeth per inch. Yeah, as you get into your thicker metal, is it thicker you get more teeth, thinner you get less teeth, or backwards? There is a chart <laughs> on Google about uh, blade size 
for metal thickness. So I was just looking to see how far the tail was from his head. I think we're about there. Like I said, you can run this right up to as high as you want and you can curl it over and make your tail the actual loop for the cat. But I'm gonna stop right here and I'm gonna turn my way out to the edge. Let's put some wax on it. You always want to be mindful of where your fingers are also. These blades will go through your finger like nothing. So you can see the back of my V here. Let's see, there we go. So when I get almost to the edge of my cut, I'll come back here to the V and I'll slow down. What this does is it allows me to to cut through the piece and my blade not go flying. See how it just kind of stopped right there? If I was back here, I'd have this whole space to travel and I've done that before and what happens is you're here. <laughs> and you cut right into your finger or a piece of your hand. Okay, so here is our kitty cat, I think. So I'm actually gonna take and rub off his face. Let's get this unzoomed. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this guy in the buffer real quick. Because that allows us to actually see the shape. There we go. We can see the shape of the cat. Focus. There we go. So we've got a little neck there. We've got the hump. We've got one little tiny, tiny ear here. I think we can make that work though. And this bit right in here, we're gonna take that part in just a little bit more with our saw. Let's see if I can get you not to hit the saw. He's trying to run away. So I want this to actually go in a little bit farther. Um, because this cheek just looks really big. So I'm just going to take this. I'm going to go up a little bit. And then I'm just going to turn it out. we're going to fix the rest of that with the Dremel. So I was getting ready for this today and my little hand piece here, oops, wrong one. <laughs> Happy little kitties. My, uh, my hand piece decided that it wanted to die. I tried fixing it, but I forgot that I'd 
I'd already fixed it prior. So it's getting saved for parts. I lost my lens here. Um, it's getting saved for parts. So I'll be using my rotary tool, my hanging guy here, and using the pedal for this. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to go through with a small diamond bit. Um, let me get this. So I have a new laptop coming. See this stuff right? Nope. That way. Right there. It's all fuzzy. My camera's going bad on my laptop. Uh, so I have a new laptop coming that should fix a lot of this. So I just put in a little diamond bit. It's pointed um, and that's going to help me be able to get in that really small space right in between the neck and the head. Let's see if I can get all of this. All right. I'm like, why is this fighting me so much? Okay. So what I'm doing now Hi Mary. Thank you. I'm so glad to be back to <laughs> my own Don to soap. <laughs> or have Don buy me new new yeah, that'd be good. Um, get a viral video out there. Okay, so let me... The angle that you guys are at is kind of a challenging one. So let me see if I can get you to where you can actually see what I'm doing. Turn off the focus. Can you see that? Okay. All right, so what I'm doing is one, I'm taking down these marks. You can kind of see the saw marks. See all the little grooves we're going to take those off with the diamond bit and at the same time we're going to shape our neck here and the cheek Let's see that's facing you guys i kind of like his little ear like that i think it'll look a lot better once we put a face on him but right now we're going to fix the neck and we're going to go through and take out all of these little saw marks so let me get this down here focus it and there now it won't continue to auto focus and if i do right here you guys can see it all right What I'm looking for here is I'm trying to look for the shiny part or make it shiny with my lights so that I can see it actually getting smooth and taking those lines out.
So I always do it from the front and then I'll turn it around and I'll do it from the back side too, just to make sure we get most of those lines out of there. Yeah, the more I see it, I do like the shape. I'm trying to do a better job of making sure I look up to make sure you guys can see. I can see fine, but you guys need to be able to see. Oh, and another thing, be careful of going into a spot that's too, too big. Um, what I mean by that, as you see, let me turn the focus back on. You see the tail where it meets right here. If I put my bit in here, there's a little tiny gap. There it is. Sorry, I'm trying. There's a little gap there. What's going to happen whenever you put your Dremel in there, your tool in there, is now you're going to make a big circle. So you'll, that's why I like using the, the pointed bits because I can go from the thinner to the thicker. And whenever I get here, I'll be at the thinner part. I use the thicker part over here, bring it right down to the thin part, get in there, and then as I get up away from that spot, I can go back to my bigger, thicker piece. So I'm not making a little round divot that I have to try and get out later. So little tip there. And I'm just barely pressing just enough to let the the bit do its job. clean that up with bigger piece so we've gone from this direction oh can't see again so now I'm gonna flip it around and we're gonna go from the back side Okay, it looks pretty clean to me. 
So now I'm going to switch over to my other, my drum disc, or not drum, yeah, my drum sand here. This little guy here. And this, you want to be really careful because this happens a lot, is if you're working on the front side, this will skip across and sometimes scratch up the front. So as you're going with this, try and go real slow and really light. Um, the grit on this is 180 grit. You might even go a little bit higher like a 200 or 220 um, I'm just barely gonna t I'm right now everything I'm doing is fuzzy too there um, what I'm doing now is I'm basically just knocking off the points and there's a little burr here we're just going to get those burrs. Um, how long are you tumbling them for? So I'm going to just take off those edges. This part here where I can get in here, I'll make sure I get that part. Um, just go nice and slow so it doesn't skip across. That's the other thing I like about the uh, two hours rinse, then start, then another two. Well, those should be coming out. I just, I always take mine, um, hot water, Dawn, fill it a little over three quarters full, and I just set it for three hours and come back and everything's great. Um, what kind of shot are you using in it? Come on, don't be mean to me. Down there a little bit, buddy. That's the other thing I really like about the the one that I can set the speed. I know how fast it's going. With this, sometimes my foot slips or the pedals too sensitive. Alright, so this is the, <laughs> the part that I'm always afraid of. And then in these corners, I'll put my piece in and just kind of draw it back through here. Yeah, it might might not be. Um, I have in my um, my 
Frankfurt tumbler. I have five pounds of shot in there. Um, and I think I just ordered another pound. Because after a while you start to lose a couple pieces here and there. So I'm just going to feel all my edges here. No sharp edges. All right. Now I'm going to switch this back out for that triangle one. And let's give this guy some character. That goes there. Um, we'll try this one. All right, so our next step is one of my favorites. Um, we're actually gonna go right here. And we're gonna give this guy I'm gonna use this so I don't make marks on it. I'm just gonna put my my stamp on him. Nice little flower creations logo. Um, at the end, we'll give him a birthday. I always put the month and year. Um, I need the hammer back. I'm going to use my little punch that I've hardened. I sharpen the tip. This is the front. So I'm going to put the spot for the whole. You want to make sure that you get that hole pointed in the right direction. You don't want it to your drill bit to go out. And then I'm going to bring this back. And now let's give him a face. I'm going to I'm going to definitely hit you if I leave the camera right where it was. All right, so I generally do an eye below each ear. He's got some eyes. All right, now let's give him a little nose, a little tiny, tiny nose. Right there. There we go. And uh, the next is we're going to draw on his mouth and we're going to draw the whiskers on. Let me see if I can get you out of the glare here. Maybe this way. Sorry about the camera work. Okay, so. I'm going to draw a little mouth on here. Smiling, of course. Put a whisker here, a whisker here, another whisker there, a whisker there. And I like my little stripey kitties. Let's do some zigzags. 
couple on the tail. Up there we have the pattern. Um, I've even given them little collars before. And when I first started out, I was actually drilling a hole right here. And I would put a little tiny crystal coming out of it. Um, so I had like a little crystal collar. And you can use this marker to also fill in the eyes and the nose. So there's our kitty cat. Okay, so now we're going to take that bit, the triangle bit that we just put in here, this guy right here, and we're going to go through, and I always like to start with the, uh, the hard part, the mouth and the whiskers. Um, when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you've got a good platform. And I try and always make it to where the drill can't slip. Because we're working at a downward flat angle. This will skip right over very easily. So let's start on this mouth here. So afraid of this pedal and make sure you're not touching your work whenever you're using one of these pedals because you don't know how fast it's going to ramp up. smile Oop. <laughs> what I just did was I put my thumb in this little slot <laughs> I was like oh that got hot quick all right so let's get these whiskers on here Can you guys see So I'm giving it some pressure and I'm pulling it, um, I'm kind of rolling it where it starts out flat and then I go to the tip. Because um, we want these grooves deep enough to be able to put um, our marker in or the black patina. Test those out. Just fill it all with black ink. You can use alcohol to take it off. Um, all kinds of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and just use my buffer. Focus. So I think I'm going to do his whiskers just a touch more. Yep, just a touch more. Um, I think one of the etching pins probably would work um, the last one that I got it was more 
of a bouncing. Um, it bounced instead of just spun. Um, and I couldn't get a really nice line with it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm in trouble. The boss just showed up. Hi. Yes. I'm on YouTube. Do you want to say hi? Want to say hi to everybody? Look, I'm making a cat. Do you approve? Yep. Okay, good. <laughs> Alright, let's get back to work. You can sit there, but I gotta move the camera. Turn the drill up, Gus. <laughs> Gus Gus's tail. Let's try pulling that one off again. Hi, yeah, buddy. So funny. Just touch more on the mouth. <laughs> Are you trying to get closer? Okay, now we can just do these squiggly lines. I think the tip of this... is no longer... have any diamond on it. You can say hi to everybody. Purr, purr, purr. Okay, buddy. I gotta finish up these lines. Okay, here we go. These guys are a lot more easy because, a lot more easy. These guys are a lot easier because there's no, you don't have to stay within a certain spot. So this is just all whatever you want to make it look like. Okay. And here we go. The end of this thing's gone. Let's try this one. And they just need to be deep enough for us to get some marker in there. Right now I'm trying to figure out how I can tie that line 
in Let's try this. Everyone's different, right? I don't know if I like this bit. This makes like really fat lines. Okay, so for me, that looks okay. I'm going to change bits. Before I do change the bits, so um, I'm going to go ahead and um, just make sure that these guys are going to hold the marker. Because that's the big thing we just. We want to make sure that it, they're deep enough. To hold the marker. Because that's what's really going to show up as the lines. And as it tarnishes, they're going to get darker also. So it's actually held held up pretty good so far. Let's see if I can get to that. I don't know, I kinda like it. Let me try the cheeks again, whiskers. So let's do this. We'll keep those down. I'm just going to put it through the buffer real quick. I probably would have done it too. Oh, forgot my light on. So there's our little kitty. Kitten. So we're going to put on our birthday, our birth month. Closer. All right. 
We are 22 and we have one more step get that up there well I guess we have a couple of steps left we have to one make him shorter focusing okay so we have to make this guy shorter because that is a long-legged cat so I generally go off my block here and I'll go right about there mark the underside and that's going to be our cut mark and then we have to drill the hole and then our kitty cat just goes in the tumbler and it is done so first i'm going to drill the hole um yes i have let's see is it still autofocus where are we here so that mark is our uh, logo it's our FCSS um, just really small I was thinking of small projects and things and I got it in two millimeter two millimeter is too small uh, because you can't really see it you need you need a visor to be able to see it uh, so my next one will be a three millimeter but we're gonna take this and switch this camera I'm gonna drill this real quick um, using a uh, what size is that 1 16th inch bit Time to change that bit. All right, so now we have a hole here. The rest of this is all going to be with the drum sander. Put that back there. I think I need to change out a whole bunch of my bits. So our next step, we're going to cut this little guy's legs off. I promise no animals will be harmed in the making of this pendant. Let's see, let's get you guys back over there. Okay, so 
I always tell you to hold the piece that you want in on the side that you are. So I want to, the cat. So I'm going to put this in here. All the pieces that I don't care about are on the opposite side. So I'm just going to pinch this off here. We got all four fork tines. So these guys I will put in a bag and save for another project because they are all the same size. I don't have to go through later and sort them out. They all came from the same fork. Sometimes you get two sizes in one fork, but at least they're all together. So here's our kitty cat. You just want to kind of check to see the length of the legs. And I think this guy is too tall. I might do that length legs for a dog. Let me double check this. So I'm using this as a backing. Hi Backyard Creations. So you can, I can see the legs, the light below it. And I'm just looking to see Yeah, I think that'll be good. There. That looks that looks better. So we'll get our block back in here. Get you guys over here. You can see it helped if I went the right direction. Let's get our focus. All right, so what we're doing now is we're going to be sanding down the legs because we just cut these off. So you can see the glare on there. Um, that's on both sides. And we have the hole that we drilled through the tail. There's a bit of flashing on the back side. So we're just going to take all this off. So a lot of times I'll go to the belt sander and just get all this flat. You don't have to. You can just take and go over your corners. Flip it over, we're gonna get the other corners. this guy over no running away And now I'm going to go down the sides. And basically I'm taking out, or I'm rounding out that cut piece. So we're left with nice smooth kitty feet. Go across the bottom.
Okay, so that's good, that's good. Everything's soft, no sharp edges. Get that over there. So here we have our final piece. Focus. Kitty cat. Um, so what I've done before a couple of times, I have nothing to point with, is I've given the cats socks like I'll just mark up this a little bit and give them all like some of them have like the little white feet or something or um, I've given them spots instead of lines um, really your imagination is limitless so I'll hit this guy with a marker and then he'll go in the tumbler any edges that are on here will all get smoothed out and we have a nice finished kitty signed born 1122 um, when let me switch cameras here switch camera there we go um, we were at a show I forget how many years ago um, but we were at an antique show and we're like, we have antique silverware that we make things out of. Um, we had so many people coming up saying we should start signing our work, um, because it was unique. And years later, whenever it gets to the next set of, uh, antiquers, they're going to know who made it because you signed it. So I was, uh, my head was a little big for a little bit. Uh, that somebody thought that I should even sign my work uh, but it's it was fun so I think for the past um, I think three years so five years ago I started signing pieces um, I have taken a couple back and signed them uh, because people wanted the logo on there uh, but Yep, it's it's always fun to be able to create and do these little guys. And by hand drawing them, everyone is different. I mean, you could even use a stencil and everyone would be different. Uh, but I just try and get proportions. And this will get a jump ring. And then the necklace will go through it and it'll sit flat. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. See where are we at? We're an hour and twenty nine minutes. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> Gus is the celebrity. Um, let's see. You heard your name. Are you gonna tell everybody bye? Come on, say bye. Yeah. There we go. What do you think? Good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out and watching with me or working with me. So when I'm making cats and the dogs, um, I'll generally do four or five at a time. Yeah. Um, she passed away in September, unfortunately. Um, 10 days before her 43rd birthday or 44th birthday um, but she's she's not suffering anymore and life is a there's a new normal somewhere here but for now we just wake up do our thing and continue on uh, yeah thank you it uh this has always been my my safe therapy space and i love just creating 
Um, so I wanted to get back in here, but it took, I think it was two months before I did my first video back. Um, yeah, good days, bad days, but it's, I mean, it's only been two and a half months. Uh, yep. Um, on Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, it's... Uh, if you do these guys in batches of four or five, um, I got to where I could do one of these every half hour, uh, beginning to end. So we're an hour and a half, but I talked a lot, and we had some mishaps and things like that. Um, <laughs> Okay, Gus. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Um, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Um, and I will see you guys next time, um, which should be pretty soon.